Right, let's see if we can explain the hybridization uh, that occurs to oxygen in a water molecule. So a few things we can uh, determine from a bit of analysis of water. First of all, uh, I know that my oxygen is forming two sigma bonds with the two hydrogens, and it also has two non-bonding pairs of electrons. And from the 3D Lewis diagram I've drawn on the left, we can identify that the electron geometry is tetrahedral uh, and well how do we know that well the molecular geometry is v-shaped or bent so those lone pairs of electrons must be in some kind of orbitals sticking off my oxygen in order to close uh, the two oxygen hydrogen bonds closer together into that v-shape so let's try and explain what hybridization process must be occurring here Let's start off by looking at an orbital box diagram of an oxygen atom. So in this case, I'm focusing only on the second energy level, the valence energy level of oxygen. So I've ignored the 1s orbital. So what you can see in the diagram is my 2s orbital and then the p orbitals in my 2p sublevel. Now, at the moment, we know that oxygen has to form two sigma bonds to the hydrogens. So technically speaking, it looks like, yeah, I've got two half-filled orbitals which could be used to form those bonds. However, a problem presents itself because if I look at where the lone pairs of electrons are in my box diagram, I've got one lone pair in an s orbital. And we know that an s orbital is a kind of spherical shape around the nucleus of my uh, atom. So the electrons will be somewhere in that red shaded area, which doesn't seem to fit our diagram. The other lone pair is in a p orbital, so that might be a p orbital, which is a figure of eight shaped, something like that. So again, it's not quite fitting uh, the kind of Lewis diagram or the electron geometry presented in my initial uh, diagram. So we've got that bit of a problem to solve. Hybridization is just uh, a kind of suggested explanation for what's going on. And ideally, what we need is all of my orbitals to be identical. So the process of hybridization is going to take that s and those three p orbitals and do some kind of mixing, some kind of combination of them to give me four identical orbitals. Now because I have taken an s and three p orbitals, each of these new hybrid orbitals is called an sp3 hybrid orbital. And importantly what we can see now is I've still got two half filled uh, orbitals that can be used to form sigma bonds to my hydrogen by overlapping with their half-filled s orbital. And I now have my two lone pairs in an identical shape orbital, um, which is going to help explain in a moment why we get this tetrahedral electron geometry. So let's have a look at the actual shape of those orbitals. We started off in an, uh, kind of an isolated oxygen atom with something like that. However, during the process of hybridization, what we've done is we've formed four identical orbitals, each with that kind of lobe, single lobe or balloon shape, uh, and they are each called sp3 hybrid orbitals. So if I arrange those hybrid orbitals around my oxygen atom in order to minimize the repulsion between them, we actually end up with that nice tetrahedral geometry uh, that we drew in the first diagram of water. So just to outline what's happening here, well, I'm forming a sigma bond using two of those hybrid orbitals with hydrogen atoms. And conveniently, my lone pairs of electrons, which are also found in a hybrid orbital, they are sticking off in identical shaped orbitals. And that solves our problem because we need to explain how water gets a tetrahedral electron geometry. In order to do so, the lone pairs must be in hybrid orbitals as well so that we end up getting that nice bent geometry, the molecular geometry between my oxygens and hydrogens. So the key point to take away from this is probably just that lone pairs of electrons also need to be in hybrid orbitals, not just the uh, bonding electrons. Hopefully this video is of some help.